Hello, this is David Hardman, and in this presentation I'm going to be talking about feature theories of perception. Feature theories have been proposed as an alternative to template and prototype theories. These are theories which suggest that uh, the way we recognize things is by comparing visual input to either templates or prototypes that are stored in memory. However, feature theories suggest that when we receive visual input, it's decomposed into component features. And these features are then compared to critical features that are stored in memory. Well, let's have a look at how exactly this might work. And we'll have a look at probably the best known of the feature theories, which is Selfridge's pandemonium theory. Well, Selfridge, in his uh, writings about pandemonium, talked about demons. Um, and he conceived as, uh, of demons as basically cognitive units that uh, carried out particular activities. So let's suppose that a person is presented with the letter E. The uh, image demon would receive the sensory input and pass this along to the feature demon. And the feature demon would then decompose the input into its basic features. So in the case of the letter E, this would be broken down into a vertical line and three horizontal lines. These features would then be passed on to the cognitive demons. And the cognitive demons are specialized in receiving particular combinations of features that relate to certain letters of the alphabet. And depending on how many features they receive, they then uh, become activated, or in the language of pandemonium, they begin shouting. And finally, there's a decision demon who listens to all this shouting and chooses the demon that is shouting the loudest. Now, if we think about uh, the letter E, composed of this vertical line and three horizontal lines, there are also other letters of the alphabet which have various combinations of horizontal and vertical lines. And these are shown on the uh, screen under the uh, uh, activation uh, or the shouting uh, demons. Uh, so which one of these is shouting loudest? Well, it is in fact the demon for the letter E. Um, which is receiving basically information about three uh, or sorry four particular features. So this is more than any of the other um, demons uh, at the uh, activation level. Uh, so the decision then is that uh, the person is recognizing a letter E. Okay, so, other theorists have talked not simply about features, but have made a distinction between local and global features. And one such author was David Navon in 1977. He presented participants with uh, letters like those shown on the uh, screen here. So what we can see is uh, there is a, a global letter, which is the letter H, and uh, there are also local uh, features. So each of the large H's shown on the screen here is made up of smaller letters. Uh, on the left hand side, uh, small H's, and on the right hand side, small S's. And uh, in Navon's experiment, what he asked people to do um, in different conditions was to either identify the global features or to identify the local features. And what he found was when people were asked uh, to, well, first of all, in fact, uh, people were faster to identify the global features than they were the local features. And it didn't make any difference whether um, 
the uh, global features were composed of small h's or small s's. However, when people were asked to identify the local features, then people were slower to respond where there was conflict between the local and the global. So in this instance, people were slower to identify the little s's because they were embedded in a larger figure, which was the uh, figure for an h. In another part of his study, Navon presented people with um, global features which were rather less distinct, and that is what's shown on the screen here. And here, Navon found a different kind of finding. Now, people were quicker to identify the local features than they were to identify the global features. And moreover, when people were asked to identify the global features, they were slower to respond if the global features conflicted with the local features. So again, they would be slower to respond to the stimulus on the right-hand side of the screen. OK, well, another feature theory is Anne Treisman's feature integration theory. And this is a similar kind of idea, except that uh, it's not specific to letters of the alphabet. So this is really about uh, recognizing uh, pretty much uh, any visual uh, stimulus. And according to feature integration theory, when we perceive things, first of all, there's a pre-attentive stage. And uh, processing at this stage is fast, it's automatic, and it's unconscious. And people um, have uh, separate mental maps, as it were, for shape, for orientation, uh, for uh, color and size. At the second stage, um, attention is uh, focused. It's under conscious control and it is therefore slower. Well, let's have a look at one piece of evidence for this particular theory. So we're going to see a bunch of um, colored shapes on the screen and the task here is to find the blue triangle. So let's have a look at this uh, screen now. Well, I'm guessing that it didn't take you very long at all to find the blue triangle. And according to the feature integration theory, what's going on here is that um, the identification of the blue triangle takes place at the pre-attentive stage because the blue triangle does not share any features with the other items on the screen. So the other items are called uh, distractors. Um, but the green circles do not share any features with the blue triangle. OK, well, let's have a look at a similar screen. Um, and again, the task is to find the blue triangle. And I'm guessing that this time it uh, will have taken you a little bit longer to locate the blue triangle on the screen. And according to feature integration theory, this is because now the blue triangle shares features with uh, distractors or some of the distractors. So uh, the blue triangle shares uh, a feature with the blue circles, the quality of being blue. And it also shares a feature with the green triangles. So uh, they're all triangles. And because there are these shared features, um, identification can't take place at the pre-attentive stage. And therefore, people have to engage in controlled conscious processing. And therefore, they are uh, slower to identify the target. So this is evidence for two stages of processing uh, in 
identifying a target in a visual scene. Uh, Treesman also had uh, another demonstration um, of feature integration theory which you uh, might want to look up in your textbook and again this involved showing patterns of items on the screen and uh, she found a phenomenon known as illusory conjunction where people sometimes actually misidentify um, an object or objects on the screen. They basically get the features mixed up between two different objects and they think they've seen something that actually uh, wasn't there. So that's a brief look then at uh, feature theories of perception and uh, I'll leave you with these references.